Hello, this is Sam Gerrans from Truth in the News. Today is Thursday the 14th of April 2022 and a little bit of housekeeping before I get into today's article. The first thing is I have 2,000 subscribers, which is uh, really weird because I've only been doing this a couple of weeks. And um, yes, it's nice and all of that. But just for context, I have another channel which uh, I've been dealing with subjects that I'm actually much more interested in than I am in this. And uh, I've been doing that for, I think, eight years, seven or eight years. And I I still have less than 10,000 subscribers on that channel after all that time. All that to say, I'm not here for the subs. I'm not here for, you know, the attention or any of that stuff. I also expect that I'm going to get banned from YouTube. <laughs> Cat here. Um, from YouTube anyway. So just to those people who, and there is a kind of, there's a, there's a type who says, you know, you're not quite as entertaining as I would like or or whatever it is. Or, you know, you don't you're not giving you're not spoon feeding me the X, Y or Z. I don't care. Go away. I'm not interested. I'm not here for you. I'm here, really, if you haven't worked it out yet, to explain to intelligent people how propaganda works. I'm not here to convince you of, you know, the rightness or wrongness, particularly of news. I'm here to show you how they are messing with your head okay that's what this is about so that was the first thing something else mm. no i think that's it um yes if you want to follow me you know after if i do get banned by youtube then the way to do that is telegram uh truth in the news anyway links down below oh yeah the other thing i'm supposed to say and all the other people who do care about all this kind of stuff tell you to say if you vote it up it, it changes the algorithm uh, it means I can get more subscribers and get banned quicker. There you are. That's it. Right. OK, let's get on with today's. Yeah, today's article is quite interesting. So what we're going to do is look at this. Now, by way of backstory, this is not this isn't uh, this isn't pretending to be journalism. And that's fine. And I'm going to be kinder to this than I would be to um, purported journalists. This is written by a girl, a woman who is Russian, and it, it's one. It's it's a genre, and I really want to just sort of point out the genre rather than being unkind to this particular individual or sort of um, humiliating them on the on the sort of crucifying them on the hill of their own incompetence. This doesn't apply here, or not incompetence even, but their own sort of deviousness. That's that doesn't quite apply here. What does apply here is is the application of the genre. And the genre is I'm Russian, therefore my opinion about Russia uh, should be taken into consideration. Now what this really boils down to is um focusing in on one particular person and making them a spokeswoman in this case for the entire nation. Now, I suppose to a certain extent, I kind of um, kind of key into that because I'm in Russia. I, I, I speak Russian, as I keep saying, and blah, blah, blah. So in a way, I'm presenting, you know, my point of view. Um, I don't have a platform with the independent, firstly. And uh, anyway, the other points we'll get into. Now, as I say, this person doesn't pretend to be a journalist. Uh, so it's quite a lot of the, of the things that I've said in other videos don't apply here. But let's just kind of go through it. And and I haven't, I've skimmed it, but I haven't read it. So we'll just read it together and see how we go. I'm Russian and I stayed quiet about Putin for a long time. This is what I really think. OK, so here we are. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone watching this has has encountered this genre before but it's just worth mentioning just worth pointing it out so that we can really become acquainted with the uh the characteristics which are which pertain to this to this genre there you are there's putin ah uh, blah blah in my days as a magazine editor in russia i used to write about the movies <coughs> volodymyr Zelensky starred in. I thought of him as a decent actor and a nice enough person. Well, if you're a nice enough person, that's very important if you're a libtard because niceness, whatever that is, I've never really been able to work it out. In fact, I don't like niceness. Niceness makes me want to punch people in the face. But if you're, if you're from the West, <laughs> and the reason why I say that, that's, that's a kind of a, of course, that's a kind of a harsh statement. Uh, for me, let's, I mean, what do we mean by niceness? Niceness really means um, innocuous, bland, uh, inoffensive, uh, with nothing 
particular to to nothing particular to one's character to make it stand out in any way. I think another word would be conformist. Uh, and that's what I really, it irritates me, uh, especially if you're from England and, you know, I'm obviously from England and I'm dealing with English newspapers and so on. Uh, the English public of a, of a particular uh, sort of cast as well, they they use the word nice as though it's some sort of, I don't know, some, <laughs> some sort of mm, prize, you know, some sort of, uh, it's, it's a characteristic to be prized. Oh, he's, but he's very nice. Who cares? Who cares about nice? Um, you know, Attila the Hun or uh, Genghis Khan could be as nice as nice as you like. It, it, I don't see the relevance. But anyway, that's me. I, 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 I don't get it. Anyway, let's carry on. In my days as a magazine editor in Russia. Now, what that we're doing here is a sort of a, saying I, I'm a writer. I'm an authority in Russia. We're establishing our credentials to begin with. I used to write about movies. Now, let's yes, let's just remember uh, Volodymyr or Vladimir, as we say in Russian, Zelensky. Uh, Zelensky is an interesting name, isn't it? If you think about it, Zelyonning, Zelensky. It's uh, just if you don't know, I mean, it's clearly related to the word for for green, green screen. Um, Zelensky starred in. Yeah, he's an actor. We do know that. And and um, I suppose <laughs> there are precedents. I'm <laughs> thinking of Reagan, but I don't think uh, Zelensky really falls into that category. I thought of him as a decent actor and a nice enough person. Well, there's, there you are. Credentials established. Over the last few weeks, I've seen him turn into a towering historical figure. This is going to come back and bite you in the, in the bottom, um, whatever your name is who wrote this. He's not a towering historical figure. He's a he's a, a, a rather pathetic um, puppet who has been um, bloated up, blown up out of all reasonable proportion, and uh, turned into something that he's quite clearly not. Uh, he's an actor. Let's just you know stick with the facts. Um, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes for for anything. Uh, for for <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway. I'll, I'll leave the comparisons there, but I really wouldn't. Over the last few weeks, I've seen him turn into, perhaps turned into would be a better choice of words, into a towering historical figure, watching his impassioned address to the UN Security Council. Now, just if you don't know me, don't know my channel, you'll, you'll realize that I have almost like an allergic reaction to gush and impassioned. If you, if you, if you look at uh, Liptard West now, uh, passion, live your passion. Passion is used as a justification. It used to be fun, but it's morphed into passion uh, for a sort of bland, uh, um, I don't know, kind of paste-like justification for absolutely everything. If you're passionate about it, uh, that that's fine. I went to America. I travelled across America, and I sort of kept a vlog of that. It was very interesting a couple of years ago when you could still travel. And... Um, I started just briefly by way of uh, backstory. I started in California and worked my way by train mainly, but also by road, uh, right across the states from from coast to coast. Uh, not not even in a straight line, but all that to say, I started off in California, and California was my first experience of America, and it was a little bit scary because everyone, um, I'm you know, you may be from California, you may not agree with this. There may be some nuances I'm not quite getting, but for me, arriving for the first time ever in America into California it was a little bit weird because everybody was really excited I mean all the time about everything I mean it was Tuesday they were really excited they couldn't they were they were almost frothing over themselves all over the place and I found it really hard I mean you, it was very hard how if you're going to start at that level of intensity where do you go from there it's just you're already at, f at full bore what happens next I mean is there like a is there a, a sort of external graphics card that you can plug in and fire up attached to a nuclear nuclear power station that's going to take you to some level you haven't even imagined yet? It was it was too much for me. But passion and feeling and living your passion and all this, um, I prefer Russians. They just kind of get on with it. But but that, that you know that's me. All that to say, not all of not all of America is um, really excited. Some of it also wants to punch your face in as i found out when i got to new york <laughs> i got on with i didn't i couldn't live in new york 
but it's too much like a psychiatric hospital for me. Uh, but at least there, people tell you where to go pretty quickly, and they don't—they're not excited when they do it. Anyway, let's carry on. Over the last weeks, we're blah blah historical blah. Okay watching his impassioned address. Now, does that mean there's any kind of content to it? No, it's impassioned. He's got feelings. Therefore, it's fine. You see, feelings are the justification all the way through the West now. Gush, 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 gush. Watching his impassioned address to the UN Security Council in which he spoke about war crimes committed by Russian troops in a town of Bucha. I'm just going to stop at that pause. Now, he... He, he sp may can speak about whatever he likes. He's an actor. He'll read whatever you put in front of him. But, you know, what happened in Butcher is not proven by the words that come out of Zelensky, Mr. Green's mouth, Mr. Green's screen. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter what he says. There are facts. There is evidence. If you want to find out about that, I suggest looking up Scott Ritter uh, in YouTube, searching by filtering by date or upload date, and find out what he says about it. Consider the evidence for yourself. Words don't mean anything. They're, they're just blur. doesn't mean anything. I worked, you know, I have a background in public relations. Work, words mean nothing to me anymore. All the lies, or at least something like all the lies, that it's possible to tell, I've already heard, okay? To continue. I caught myself thinking that I want Russia's next leader to be just like him. <laughs> Please, God, save us from that. Courageous, principled, and boundlessly empathetic. Now, there's a word. Empathetic. This is a gush word. Empathy. Who could argue with empathy? Do you really want a leader who is empathetic? I mean, wise, insightful, decisive. But empathetic? Is that really what you want? Think about that for a while. And... Uh, for me, as somebody who lives in Russia, the, the thought of having someone, <laughs> having Zelensky as the president of this country is so close to my worst nightmare that uh, it doesn't really bear thinking about. Anyway, let's carry on with this. In the fall of 1993, I began my first semester at N NYU. Just one year earlier, I'd been a regular Moscow teenager. Okay, so these against the credentials. I'm a, a regular Russian person, therefore my opinion counts, therefore blah, blah, blah. Whose wildest ambition was to own a nice pair of jeans. Oh, okay, this feeds back into, um, you know, people's idea about Russia. 1993, Russia... In 1993, I came first came to Russia in 1991, so I, I caught that time. Uh, this is the Yeltsin time, and I, I think this rather it rather sort of supports people's idea of Russia as a gas station with nuclear weapons and you know these sorts of uh, tropes and memes and so on. Sure, Russia had just basically collapsed in 1993. Uh, it's it's not there now. <laughs> I'll just give you just an example that just comes to mind, right? Just one. And I'm not saying that everybody in Russia is rich. Of course, there are poor people and so on. But when the, I think it was the the, the latest 7 Series BMW came out, I have a friend. Uh, I mean, we're still a good, good, you know, we're still acquaintances, but we were close friends at this time. He's a Russian um, after journalist. He's like a car journalist person. Um, anyway, he told this, this new 7 Series BMW, BMW had just come out. I, 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 I don't know much about cars, but it was the latest, 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 latest of this one. And at that time, there were like seven in the world. And he said he was walking from the metro, and this is downtown Moscow, to his home, and he saw three of them. So, you know, the idea of Russia is, is you know, where you can, it's a big deal to get a pair of jeans. Let's just kind of put that in a, in a, in a more broad context. Of course, there are poor people in Russia. And there are poor people in in America. I know because I travelled right across it. I was quite surprised. But my father had been offered a job at an American company. Also, let's just put this into perspective. Nineteen ninety three. That's when she was, you know, there. And that's that's a long time ago. Uh, he'd been offered a job at an American company, and our family relocated to New York. With the move, the world suddenly opened to me, possibilities beckoning, yeah, exceptionalism, etc. My father, ever the practical man, told me to study business. Um, ever the obedient child, um, ever, ever the repeating 
grammatical construction, um, I didn't protest. Okay, this is quite clever, isn't it? So uh, the the in, the implication is what you're left to infer is that uh, Soviet Soviet the Soviet regime was completely despotic. My father, my father, he told me you will study the business. I'm turning into French. I don't know what's happening there, but you get the point, right? I mean, this, this is quite cleverly barbed in in particular, in a slanted in a particular way. Ever the obedient Soviet child, I didn't protest, despite the fact that nothing could interest me less. Well, perhaps you should have done, or at least stated your case. But fortunately for me, there was no such thing as a business major at NYU. No, I expect you, there's plenty of uh, uh, social studies and uh, so on. Anyway, and when I got my BA in philosophy, okay, <laughs> I moved back to Russia, leaving my parents and younger brother behind. The fact that I did so was testament to how proudly I changed in four years. Was it? Okay. Well, I suppose a degree in philosophy could do that to you. No bad thing. I was barely 20, but my reasons for returning were clear. I'd fallen in love with a man who lived in Moscow, and I longed for the glorious city which I still considered to be my home. I'll just kind of unpack some of this. Um... She found a man and she went to live there, okay? And I, this story progresses, so let's just follow it as it goes. Moscow was an exciting place. And I agree with that. 1997, Moscow was a, a, a hellraiser of a place um, where everything was changing at an incredible pace. Yes, it was. New lives were being built on top of the remnants of the USSR. I also felt drawn to Russian intellectual culture. I'll just translate that. Life in, in America was so dull that I had given the opportunity to go back to Russia, I took it. Um, I don't mean to be horrible about the West, and I'm sure there are still some exceptions, but the intellectual life uh, in the West is, is it's, um, it's, 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 the, it's kind of like cardboard now. There's so, there are so few people to talk to. I went to university and I found two people that it was really worth spending a lot of time talking to. Mainly, they wanted a career in marketing, and um, that was it. Uh, they didn't want to discuss the meaning of life. They didn't, you know, I thought university would be this sort of hotbed of, 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 of you know, radical conversation and, you know, discuss, discussing new ideas. It wasn't that at all. It was um, people who wanted to go home and watch Neighbours and, uh, and get a good job and um, pay off their student loans. That was it. It was a major disappointment to me. So uh, for myself, when I first came to Russia and suddenly I was thrown into this environment, not only where you could talk about the meaning of life, but it was very difficult to talk about anything else. <laughs> it had a certain attraction. So I, I, I do take a point there. I also felt drawn to Russian intellectual culture having started writing my first novel. Okay, we're a failed novelist. Nothing wrong with that, but let's just... You know, let's just call things by their real names. Um, and I wanted my child, whom I was already carrying. Watch out for women who say my child. You see how we've gone? This is for libtards, okay? This piece of uh, indoctrination. We've gone from, it's all about her, if you notice. Uh, she's interested in this man. Now she's got knocked up. It's her child, not their child, her child. And now she's going on to a career which actually turned into not very much, okay? whom I was already carrying to speak my native language as fluently as I did. Well, the man she was so deeply in love with, he didn't last very long, did he? My marriage to the father of my son, my son, okay? You watch the language, language will tell you so much. Didn't work out. Well, there's a surprise, you solipsistic, <laughs> egocentric maniac. As was perhaps expected of a union between people so young. I don't see that that follows at all, but we'll leave that. But I was busy becoming who I wanted to be. I got that impression, darling, it's just from the very beginning. A writer and a mother, I see, and quickly bounced back. Mm -hmm. Russia continued to change. In August 1991, I saw Vladimir Putin on television for the very first time. OK, that's correct. That's about the time he came on the scene. Introduced as the new prime minister. I've never been particularly politically astute. I'll just... Just read that again. I've never been particularly politically astute. She's admitting that she has no idea what she's talking about. Just, just for the record, okay? 
But at that moment, I saw in his face, as in a crystal ball, what was going to happen in the years to come. The scheming, the corruption, the crackdown on independent media, the police state. Well, you should have mentioned this at the outset, because what you actually are is a prophetess. Um, Nostradamus. Natasha Damas, or whatever, whatever. Can't you see what this is doing? This, I mean, I understand this isn't journalism, and it isn't. We have to be fair. It isn't pretending to be, but what it is pretending to be, or purporting to be, is some sort of authoritative account. I am from Russia. I am Russian. Therefore, I have the inside scoop. Here it is. But let's consider the actual contents. It's a kind of a not very good novel. I think what this is is an explanation for why this person is, you know, I mean, sadly for her, a failed novelist and a single mother. In September of that same year, a series of explosions destroyed several apartment blocks in the cities of Moscow. Uh, Bunya. Is that correctly spelled? I don't know if it is. And uh, Volgadonsk. Over 300 people died and 1,700 were injured. I remember watching the news late at night. My two-year-old boy, a uh, two-year-old son asleep in the next room and trembling in fear, feelings, feelings, as I wondered, gush, gush, if my building would be next. Horrors. I imagined the most horrible thing. Not that we'd both be dead, but dying, separated by falling walls, him calling me, pleading for help. I'm sorry to, 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 to laugh, but if you've seen um, my, my uh, exposition or kind of deconstruction of an article by Bethan McKern, is it Bethan, um, about Butcher, it's, it's, it's quite similar to that. But to be fair to this person, to be fair to her, she, she's not claiming that this is journalism. But can you not see the parallels between this and, and stuff which does claim to be journalism? Anyway, let's carry on. In a few days, rumours abounded that it was Putin who'd ordered the explosions with the aim of blaming them on Chechen militant Islam Islamists or Islamists. He became... Uh, is there any proof here? No, there isn't. But then it doesn't have to be because it's not journalism. It's, it's sort of an op-ed piece. And that's fine in this context. He became president in 2000 after starting the second war in Chechnya. Well, I, I don't know if starting is precisely the word I would choose. But again... We have to we have to allow her a certain amount of slack because she she isn't saying she's a journalist, um, and famously having promised to snuff him in the outhouse. Uh, I think what this is is machit sartiri. Um, I don't know if that's the exact phrase. Certainly, Putin has used this phrase. It is a kind of like banditska um, virajenia, a kind of band, kind of you know criminal thing. Uh, if you don't know, if you don't know, and I'm not here just to s kind of support Putin. It's not really about that. I'm just giving you my perspective on it. Uh, unlike, uh, let's say, for example, poor, poor Joe Biden, who can't string a sentence together and is as surprised as anyone to find out where he is, um, or, or, or some of the other politicians that we've had in the West, uh, they're not, not all, but some, Putin uh, has a really sharp uh, uh, sense of humour. I mean, you, you may like it, you may not like it, but it, he's very quick. And he, you know, he can speak in a number of registers. So I, I can't speak to the exact context in which he said this. I, I have, if, I, if I'm correct that this is what they're translating from, then I have heard him say it. Um, I don't know what the context was, but certainly he's somebody who is, he's known broadly admittedly among, um, as well among people who don't like him to have a sense of humor so it may that may answer it it may not maybe i'm missing it if you if you remember the precise context and you are a russian speaker then you feel free to to correct me in the notes but um, i'm not exactly saying that he was saying this in a in a as a joke but certainly he has a sense of humor and he uses a number of registers uh, when he's speaking to the delight of the majority here of the population of Russia. Yes, well, again, this is rather a, a, an insult to the majority of the people of, po of population of Russia, isn't it? Unless, of course, it was a joke and the, the majority of the people of, uh, of the population of Russia have got a sense of humour. And as someone who lives here, there are many, many, many ways you could criticise Russia. 
Uh, I'm not saying Russia is perfect by any means. That's not my argument. What I will say, though, is Russians have a, a, an exquisite sense of humor, uh, and you need one to live here. Had I believed my initial premonition, I would have left right away. But I like to think of myself as a rational person. Well, when did that start? Um, I, I certainly, from based on what I've seen so far, rational isn't the word I would use to describe you. But, but you know, again, this is you are allowed a certain amount of self-indulgence here. It is an OPED piece. It's an opinion piece. So, you know, we shall allow you to continue. So And so I tried to convince myself that I was being paranoid. It wasn't easy. I'm not quite sure it wasn't easy. What wasn't easy? Uh, to stay there as a rational person or to convince yourself that you were being paranoid? I don't know. Over the next 10 years, Putin's regime... Regime, that's an interesting word, isn't it? Regime. Already that sounds scary. Regime. Everywhere has a regime. Britain has a regime. France has a regime. Papua New Guinea has a regime. It's just the order under which you live. Uh, took away people's freedoms in tiny steps that were probably meant to be unnoticeable. Well, here we're ascribing intent where we, we're not proving it. I mean, maybe it's true. Maybe that's precisely what happened. But we're not being given any evidence to that effect here. We're just being given surmise, which, again, is acceptable in the context. While he gathered enough power for himself that he could change the constitution change the constitution and effectively be president indefinitely um well certainly there was a well, the constitution says what it says and uh yeah i i, I suppose kind of kind of go along with that uh the constitution was kind of handed to russia by the americans by the way uh, along with most of its the new legal system i think us aid uh, did that because you have to understand that Russia was sort of created the new Russia by uh, by by American interests and carpetbaggers and so on. I'm not here really to to justify this. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure people who get very passionate about what they call democracy will have lots to say about it, and they're welcome to their their thoughts. Um, I have a different perspective on all of that. I'm just going to leave that and move on. Okay, where were we? Meanwhile, I'd built up my Moscow life. I was a writer, but I was also a single mother, yes, yes, we'd noticed that, whose relatives lived across the ocean, and I worried about what would happen to my son if anything happened to me. Lots of me, isn't there, in this? So, although I wanted to report on the shrinking of democracy, I wrote instead about beauty and culture. Now, what she's doing is kind of justifying the fact she didn't do anything except write about beauty and culture. Okay? This is uh, self-justification. But she needs to retain some sort of authority for the rest of it to sound like it has any reason for being. To continue. In this way, I thought I'd protect myself from the dangers of those who covered nationalist movements and wars. I wouldn't end up dead like Anna Politkovskaya and countless others. No, you end up covered in lip, lip gloss. It must have been terrifying. But self-preservation under a regime, a regime again, the word regime, like Putin's, can only take you so far. In 2014, when the people of Ukraine ousted their pro-Russia president, Viktor uh, Yanukovych, uh, actually the people of Ukraine didn't do anything sort, uh, just so you know, the people who got rid of Yanukovych uh, were was the Americans. It was um, Victoria uh, Newland. She did that. So the, the, people, of, <laughs> the people of Ukraine uh, are, are neither here nor there in, in this whole equation, as anybody... I mean, we do have her own. We do have her own um, acknowledgement that she has almost no idea about politics whatsoever. So you know, she's proving herself to be right as we pro progress through this um, piece of work. Uh, Putin swiftly moved into the neighboring country and annexed the Crimean Peninsula. I'm not going to get into the backstory of of Crimea, Crimea, and who it belonged to and how long and under what context, in what context it became sort of al allied with uh, with Ukraine by um, Khrushchev and all of that. We'll just leave that and just move on. Uh, 
Russian society split into two opposing camps, one cheering Putin's maneuver and the other incensed by it. The question, who does uh, Crimea belong to, became the most salient marker of them versus us. Marriages crumbled under the weight of this question. I think that's a bit of an overstatement. I, I mean, marriages crumbled over the weight of this question. I think you'd really need to kind of support that with something. I mean, Russians get very passionate, like as do lots of people, over political questions. But I, I can't say, I mean, marriages crumble over quite a lot of issues in this country. But I, I wouldn't have said that the annexing of Crimea featured very, very kind of dominantly among them. But, you know, I don't know. It, it, if you are Russian and your marriage crumbled under the weight of the... Uh, um, political tensions or uh, the divide between those for and against the taking, you know, the sort of retaining of Crimea under the Russian Federation, please comment in the comments. You know, I'd be interested to know. Friendships were irreparably broken. People became in estranged from their parents. I don't know. That's a lot of claims that I, I have to say. I, I mean, to be honest, Probably I've lived here longer than she ever did, so I, I haven't seen that here. Later that, uh, pay people, parents, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Later that year, a provision to the criminal law obligated or obliged, as I would say, all dual nationals to report to the authority. Did it? Uh, yes, there was a process. I was out of the country that time. I made a copy of my American passport, filled out the requisite forms and went to my local branch of the Federal Migration Service. The man who inspected my documents had the unmistakable air of someone who was embroiled in Russian state bureaucracy. Well, yes, he, he might do because he works for them, darling. I mean, have you been to the post office recently or you tried to renew your driving license? That's the kind of people who work in these places. <laughs> it all sounds so sinister, doesn't it? Oh, let's hope he did something really serious, because um, let's find out. At once condescending and menacing. Really, condescending and menacing. That's not my experience. I mean, just I'll give you just a bit of background. And again, I'm just, I'm just trying to kind of give you some broader context. Uh, what 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 was this certainly true is that anything to do with bureaucracy or any kind of contact with the state for the, the longest time was certainly time consuming and boring that that I would definitely say and uh i used to joke that russia was the only country in the world where if you went to the dentist you had to take a box of chocolates with you um that's changed quite a, considerably and again i'm not here to sign a sell you Russia. I'm not trying to, I don't work for the Russian Tourist Board. I'm just telling you what, 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 what is real. In the last, I don't know, because it happened when I was out of the country, because we lived abroad for a couple of years in between living here. But over that period, they've uh, start, they've opened up these centres. There's something called Gosuslugi, and Gosuslugi is like state services. Now, that, that, that kind of does sound condescending and menacing at the same time, doesn't it? Um, but that's kind of, that's the online system which is attached to these sort of centres where they deal with pretty much everything to do with the state, like taxis and pass not passports so much because that's slightly different but but a lot of the stuff that you will deal with the state is dealt with centrally and as somebody who's lived also in the uk i also lived in spain for three years i lived we lived in georgia for a year uh, they have a similar system in georgia in fact it's sort of been rolled out and sort of stopped at some point but i have to say and i'm not being nice about russia i'm just trying to give you some some context is this system is depending on what you're doing it's far more efficient than, than what you've got in the UK, and it's certainly cheaper, okay? That's been my experience. Uh, it, it, that, it wasn't always that way. So I'm, I acknowledge that. It, it was very time-consuming, extremely boring, frustrating, and all of that. You never know which queue you were in. It, it was, you, you, ha you had to have the negotiation skills of, of, of some sort of you know, professional um, you know, anti-terrorist negotiator to get through this whole system. 
and, and the diplomatic skills of Lavrov combined with all kinds of other skills just to kind of negotiate the queuing systems. That's all gone now. So you just go, you get a ticket, you sit down, they call your name, you go up, they do it. They're just It's just a process now and it's it's efficient. And, you know, you're, you have to leave, uh, you know, did you like them? You know, you know there's the buttons with this, where you've got a smile and a, and a sort of straight face and then somebody being sick, you know, which one, which one, which one? <laughs> Which one were you today? It's feedback forms, all the stuff you have in the West, but it's really efficient now, at least in the cities that I've lived in. Anyway, just carry, get back to menacing and uh, what was it? Condescending. He made it exceedingly clear what he thought of the likes of me. And when I came home that evening, I told my partner, I see, partner. Okay, and this is, this is for lip, lip, lip tarts that finally I wanted to leave Russia for good I'm failing to see what the big kind of like um, in, in, in uh, just so you know when you in in storytelling you have uh, what's called I think oh what's your name Carr I think his surname I can't remember doesn't matter he wrote a book called Story and uh, it's basically about about screenwriting and there is in any story, there's what's called an initiating incident. And this initiating incident is the thing that sets the hero off on the journey. It's the um, Star Wars, the first Star Wars. It's when Luke Skywalker's home is destroyed by you know, the forces of darkness. And that forces him to go out and go back and find find Obi-Wan Kenobi and say, yes, I, I do want to find out about the force and I am going to you know destroy the Death Star and all the rest of it. Okay. This person is is, is a writer. Um, I'm failing to see the initiating incident in her in her in the arc of her story. Other than feelings, but we have to accept that feelings are acceptable because it's an op-ed piece. But even so, I'm not convinced by them myself. I mean, maybe, maybe, the, maybe there is some sort of huge body of evidence that support these feelings. That if we knew about this, would would the 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 evidence, the, the kind of the conclusions, would be obvious and um, beyond any question. But that body of evidence hasn't been produced here, at least at least for me. What we're talking about here, I'm not here to attack this girl or and her feelings. Necessarily, I'm really here to identify the type of propaganda, and that's what this is, that this is. There are all kinds of other people in Russia that you could have spoken to. They've complete had a whole load of different feelings, all right? But we're not being asked about those. You're being told about this person's feelings, as though these feelings, this particular gush stream, like gush stream one, <laughs> is uh, of particular validity. But I'm failing to see that validity. Also, also... Um, if I think of it, if if you go to uh, Patrick Lancaster's excellent uh, channel on YouTube and um, look up, uh, in fact, I'll link to it if I see it. He's got some interviews with Russian speakers living in Ukraine who have a very different take on what's going on. OK, I mean, there are millions of people you could talk to uh, in, in Ukraine, out of Ukraine, in Russia, with all kinds of different points of view. But the, but. The, What's it called? The independent. The <laughs> independent are focusing your mind on this one. And what this is, is we are supposed to, supposed to assume that this person was sort of, um, I mean, the story is I, I was hiding, cowering in a corner because things were so terrible, but uh, covering my face with lip gloss and, and mascara for a living when really what I wanted to do was to expose the evil Putin. But I went through this big, deep crisis where I, I couldn't come out of it. But as a as a as a f single mother, which is somehow in the West a kind of uh, hallowed species, as though make bad life choices are somehow I don't know supposed to give you some kind of uh, credibility. Uh, there I was, but now now things are so bad. I'm I'm going to have to declare my hand, and here you are. This is what I was hiding all the time. Well, okay, but you haven't produced any evidence for that, and there's nothing here, in my view, to really. Um, that, that, that is even relevant to, the, to, to what's going on. So why are they focusing on it? They're focusing on it because they know you're too dumb to, to do for yourself what I'm doing for you now. OK, well, I don't mean the people I'm talking to, but the, the, the general population are just picking up keywords, feelings. The way this works is all to do with feelings. 
keywords, regime, you know, menacing, you know, Putin, uh, you know, um, um, oppression, freedom, and linking these keywords, these slogans to little points in your nervous system. And these are trigger points. It's why is it why is it everyone's so triggered these days? Because they're totally conditioned by uh, information by weaponized information, the contents of which they don't understand. But what I'm trying to do in this channel is explain to you, I'm not, I don't want to do this forever. I don't even want to do this for very long. I'm trying to, once I get some of the technology sorted out back on this, uh, you know, setup that I've got, I'll be able to show you graphically. There's only about eight things that happen, eight or nine. In fact, while I'm on the subject, I came up with this idea in response to a comment. Someone said, well, is there a book on this, what you're talking about? I said, no, I just worked it out for myself because of my background in public relations, just because, you know, I think about things. Uh, but I said, this isn't this isn't complicated. I mean, I'm talking now more about, you know, stuff that pretends to be news and, and also entertainment. They all has this pre they all have this prepackaged opinion that they're designed to lead you to imperceptibly. And that is what you might call the, the moral, as if you were going to go back to the Middle Ages. It's the payload. It's the thing that this is why it's being done. I said there are only about eight or nine of these things. It's really simple. Once you learn this, this is this is very obvious. And so what I'm trying to do on, on this channel is kind of teach people these. But what I said to them, I said this is a the way to learn this is just to write down these eight or nine things. And I, I said, you know, you could eat, the way to learn it is just to read a few articles for yourself. In fact, I said you should turn it into a game like um, propaganda bingo, a bit like Twister. Uh, except you know you invite your friends around and you could play this game a bit like twister except you don't have to get up off the sofa but <laughs> it, it, once you see these patterns they they just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat it is a very um it's like minecraft there isn't any there isn't any real granularity there it's just these huge big pixels block 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 and i that's all i see all i see i, I don't see the code anymore i, I just see OK, this is a point one. This is a two. This is a seven. This is a six. They're doing this. And it's not I'm so clever. It's just that once you watch a few of these and, and once I get some of this, these things back, I want to be able to show people you can do it, too. It's it's it is so simple. It's it's boring for me, actually. But I'm I'm demonstrating these in this context because it's important. I mean, before, OK, people were you know, brainwashed by COVID and all the rest of it. Frankly, I'd, you know, I've moved on from all these kind of subjects myself. But I decided to do this because I think it is important at this time. Anyway, let's just finish this up. The man inspected my documents had the unmistakable air of someone who was embroiled in Russian state bureaucracy. Well, as I say, that would be because he is embroiled in Russian state bureaucracy. He's a Russian state bureaucrat. It's just like somebody who's embroiled, you know, he might have an, he might find a, a garage mechanic uh, had the unmistakable air of someone who works in car maintenance. Anyway, at once condescending and menacing, yeah, that would be, <laughs> that, that actually would apply to some, most people who, <laughs> my experience of quite a few mechanics. Um, he made it exceedingly clear what he thought of the likes of me. Well, what, what was that? And when I came home that evening, I told my partner, OK, this is the poor sap she's got to pay for her son, that finally I wanted to leave Russia for good. All right. It took us another two years. Oh, she took him. Uh, we don't know if it's, he took him with her. It took us another two years to make the move. And we arrived in the United States in 2016. I began writing fiction in English. It looks like you haven't ceased either. And continued to work for Russian media outlets that didn't support Putin's regime. All right, okay. Well, she's sort of trying to arrogate to herself some sort of credibility. Let's just, you know, carry on. Still, I was careful not to write about politics. Okay. So, what she's trying to say is, uh, although I could have written about Putin, uh, I didn't because even though I was out of the country, my main concern was myself, my son, and lip gloss. But the, I saw the light. On the road to Damascus, the scales fell from my eyes, and the vo heard a voice from the heavens, Saul, Saul, why dost thou persecute me? And now she sees it all. Putin is the Antichrist, and she's going to pet everything right. Well, so glad that's happening.
<sighs> Still, blah, blah, blah. I could face prosecution, living dangerously, even though you're not in the country. Everything changed this February. However, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, get some backstory on this. I, again, look up Scott Ritter, sort by whatever upload date or Colonel Doug McGregor, you know, just, you know, I'm not even going to address this. A country that I'd visited often and love. Okay. I've visited it as well. It's very nice. A country where many of my friends hail from made it impossible for me to keep silent. Okay. So now she, you remember she, she writes uh, fiction and she does must have some sort of concept. Robert McKee, that's the person I was trying to think think of, Robert McKee, who wrote a very good book on on structure of uh, stories um, called Story. And in any story, there has to be a sort of an initiating instant. And and so she's, what we're trying to get to is the initiating instant, the thing that made the hero do take the action. You know, in fact, the way it works is there has to be an initial uh, decision not not to follow. You know, there's a call. There's a call to action which the hero must uh, decline. But then circumstances become so overpowering that Luke Skywalker is forced, despite his initial reticence, to embrace the Force and go out and take on Darth Vader and the Death Star. Well, this is what happened to her. See, I need to say publicly that this war is abhorrent and that Russians do not equal Putin, even those of us who, like me, have been afraid to speak out in the past. I do realise that I am able to take this risk because I'm in New York. Yeah, I, I spotted that, darling, before we got to your admission of the blindingly obvious. Protected by my American passport. A law has been passed in Russia that prohibits its citizens from using the word war to refer to the, quote, special operation that's taking place in Ukraine and effectively prevents them from saying they're against it under the threat of imprisonment. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to see the wording of that. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know that that's true. I know that there are certain, uh, there's certainly a, um, there have been laws passed to stop people promoting journalists uh, Western journalists coming in and sort of spreading their disinformation around in this environment. But I haven't read the wording of that, so I can't speak to that. Certainly, I do know that there are laws in the West preventing Russia from presenting its case. That That's certainly the case. But um, the, the details of this, are, I'll have to admit that I'm ignorant of those details. My heart goes out. Again, my heart goes out. Who can't be convinced by some, you know, some gush bird's heart, impassioned speech, feeling deeply? It sounds like I'm ag against this whole side of life. I'm not. I'm not. I, 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 I accept. You know, feelings are a part of it, and I have feelings too. But I don't. Um, I don't give them sway to that extent, and I don't trust people who do because they're unreliable. Because if they can be induced to feel one lot of stuff at the drop of a hat, they can be in induced to feel a whole nother load of stuff at the drop of a hat. And that's really my part of my critique of the West. It was I saw it going back to California, most writ largest there, where everybody was in a, apparently in a state of um, near orgasm uh, uh, or permanently it, it was scary I, I couldn't i couldn't take that amount of excitement in, in, you know with um from from grown ups it just doesn't seem doesn't seem normal to me my heart goes out to all the people back home who feel the same way i do i know that there are many of them and that they are experiencing crushing guilt for failing to somehow stop putin well i i can't speak down into these particular uh, unnamed people i don't know maybe they do exist maybe they are you know cowering uh, you know in, in the padiers the in the sort of you know in the entrances to buildings and cowering in the corner and hoping that this the whole building isn't going to fall down on them maybe they do exist i can't say that they don't i don't know i, I will keep my eyes out for them but i haven't i can't say i've personally seen them and 
you, you're not producing any evidence that they exist except your feelings. And that's the basis of this. And that's what I'm pointing out. I'm not saying she's wrong. I don't know. who You couldn't say, you couldn't disprove any of this because it doesn't have any basis in, in objective reality. What I'm saying is it's being presented to you as fact, as a representative of an entire people, somebody who doesn't live here anymore, somebody who didn't say anything at the time, somebody who's now living somewhere else, has a, 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 another passport and is, never has to come back here, um, who came here, Divorce rate, uh, a man, a Russian man took his child and, and went back to the United States and has spent her time writing about lip gloss. This person, I don't consider it an authority, especially as she's not presenting any evidence other than her own feelings, her, you know, her own sort of, um, you know, her own uh, outline of the situation as she feels it to be. She's welcome to feel that way. I wouldn't intrude upon her feelings but they don't have any relevance to me or to this or to this situation however they are being made much of here in order to support a narrative that is itself predetermined what this isn't is in any way relative or relevant to anything that is that concerns us I, whatever her name is, have some feelings about stuff. Okay, so what? That's that's the point I'm making. There are many, many other people who have very strong feelings, much stronger than her feelings right now. Go and talk to somebody in Mariupol and see how they feel about things. Somebody whose building was bombed by because the they had Azovtsi hiding in the in the basement or on the roof or something like that. See how they feel about things. You can find out how they feel about things. Uh, people who's put their names uh, and and taking real risks to, to 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 say stuff because they don't have a second passport. They're not in America, and if the Russians ever leave, the, <laughs> the Ukrainians will be back to kill them. Okay, those people find out what they've got to say about it, and you can do that uh, by clicking on the link that I'm going to provide below to Patrick Lancaster's excellent uh, work. If you don't know who Patrick Lancaster is, click on the link, go and have a look. Here's somebody who's really, he's balls of steel. I mean, he's there on the ground in Mariupol uh, asking people. I mean, the, the guy speaks, I mean, kind of breeze block Russian, but he understands the answers. He's, he's got a team and he's there asking people what's really going on. He's, he doesn't ask them leading questions. In, in fact, he just kind of asks the same question <laughs> and they just talk to him. Watch that. It's, it's, that. That will give you some insight into what's really going on. Anyway, let's just finish up with this. Crushing guilt for failing to somehow stop Putin, the president they didn't elect. <sighs> OK, whatever. And while we'll agonize for a long time I'm, oh, over the question of what more each of us could have done, it's beyond clear that peaceful protests don't stand a chance against Putin's weapons and his complete disregard for human life. I'll just translate that. Uh, regime change is justifiable because I have feelings. That's what this means. That's all it means. OK, anyway, I think we get this. Uh, I'm sorry for sort of belaboring the, the blindingly obvious and kind of going round and round and round over the same stuff. But that's all you can do with this. It's all the same. I wanted to present this this particular article because it's not journalism. It doesn't pretend to be journalism. It is an op-ed piece. It is a, you know, it is a my feelings, my perception, my point of view piece. But I wanted to s illustrate what it's doing, how it's doing it, why it's doing it. I think I hope we've achieved that. Please like this. I mean, I have been told to say, please like this. If you press the like th the like button, apparently it changes the algorithm and will get me banned quicker. <laughs> so anyway, that's the way to do it. Anyway, that's it. And uh, yeah, that's all for now.